All right, so this video we're going to look at error bounds for the trapezoidal and, well, the trapezoidal rule, but I also have the uh, midpoint rule also. Well, let's just look at the trapezoidal. I'll have separate videos for the midpoint. Uh, so suppose f double prime of x, the absolute value, is less than or equal to k when a is between, I'm sorry, when x is between a and b. And if the error for the trapezoidal rule, that's the errors in the trapezoidal rule, e, of e sub t, the absolute value, is less than or equal to k times b minus a cubed over 12n squared. So the, the main thing that we're doing here, it, the, the more difficult part of the problem, is figuring out what k needs to be. Okay, so. I've got three examples to work. Each example is going to have its own video. This will be the example one. So this will be the first video. The second video will have cosine x squared. And in the third video we'll have, which will be example three, we'll have e raised to the one over x. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at the examples. All right, so let's look at example two. Uh, how large do we need to take in in order to guarantee that the trapezoidal rule approximation for cosine x squared from zero to one is accurate to within point zero 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 one? All right, so, well, here it is. We've got to figure out what k is. k is usually the most difficult part of the problem. Sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's a little more difficult to to get. So well let's get k. So in order to get k we need the second derivative because remember remember the absolute value of the second derivative is less than or equal to k. Alright so that's what we're looking for. All right, so I have f of x is equal to cosine x squared. So I need the derivative of this. So f prime of x, well, derivative of cosine is negative sine. And then times the derivative of what you're taking the cosine of. And so I've got the first derivative is equal to negative 2x sine x squared. Alright, now I need the second derivative. So the second derivative, f double prime of x, so I'll use the uh, product rule. So the product rule, well, that's the derivative of the first function, so derivative of negative 2x is negative 2 times the second function plus okay plus the derivative of the second function well derivative of sine is cosine times the derivative of what we're taking the cosine of x squared is 2x times the first function okay so we've got f double prime of x is equal to negative 2 sine x squared minus 4x squared times cosine x squared. And then what I want to do here is let's go ahead, I don't know, it may, may make it a little easier. Let's factor a negative out. 2 sine x squared plus 4x squared cosine x squared. All right, so let's look at this. So we got to figure out what k is. So we know, let me write it down here. We know, I'm going to come down here like this, we know that x is between 0 and 1, 
There's our limits between 0 and 1. Okay. All right. So how are we going to figure out what k is? Well, let's, let's look at this. We've got the absolute value of the second derivative is equal to, now we say absolute value, we could put this in absolute value, okay? So, so let's look, that's absolute value, two sine x squared, and of course we got the, let's look at the negative out front, two sine x squared plus 4 x squared cosine x squared. Okay. All right, so this is going to be less than or equal to, and that's the problem. What's it less than or equal to? We've got to figure out what k is. Well, that might be a problem because we know x is between 0 and 1. But look at this. This is where we have to kind of use our imagination. We realize that x is between 0 and 1. Well, let's, let's kind of write down everything we know. Well, we know that sine x squared, that is less than or equal to 1, right? Because whenever you take the sine of something, it's never going to be larger than 1. Okay, and, and I'm not worried about the negative here because we're taking the absolute value in the end. Okay, so it's all going to be positive. And then we also know that cosine x squared is less than or equal to 1. So I know neither one of these terms are going to be larger than 1. All right, so now our other variable here is x squared. Well, look at this when x is between 0 and 1, what can we say about x squared? Well, x squared is less than or equal to 1, right? Because if we're between 0 and 1, well, you're squaring decimals or fractions. It's not going to be more than 1. But we got the 1 here. Yeah, it'll be 1 if we replace the x with a 1. So each one of these, the sine x squared, the x squared, and the cosine x squared, they're all going to be less, less than or equal to 1. Okay? So let's look at this. That's gonna, that tells me that I've got, what, 2 times... And what I'm doing here, since I know sine x squared is less than or equal to 1, and like I said, I'm not worried about the negative. All I'm worried about is the positive. So I'm not going to bring the negative with me. All right, so sine x squared, well, that's less than or equal to 1. So I'm going to replace sine x squared with a 1. And then that's plus 4 times, well, x squared is going to be less than or equal to 1. So I'm going to replace that with a 1. And cosine x squared is going to be less than or equal to 1. I don't know how close to 1 it's going to be, but I know it's going to be less than or equal. So I'm going to replace cosine x squared with 1. So what I've done is I've taken this and I've replaced it with a 1. I've replaced this with a 1. And I've replaced this with a 1. And that gives me 2 times 1 plus 4 times 1 times 1. And so... I know this is equal to 6. Okay, So I know that the absolute value of f double prime of x is less than or equal to 6. All right. So what does that mean? So I'm going to take k to be 6. Now, could we have gotten maybe a little bit better approximation? Sure. But, I mean, what would we have had to have done to do that? Okay. This right here, you want to get, you want to get something close to what K would be. Now, bear in mind, you want to get as close as you can. Okay. 
But, I mean, because you think about it, the further away you get, like if we would have used 8, 10, 12, or whatever, well, what would happen? Well, this number here is getting larger and larger, so that means our n value would be larger. So we want n as small as possible. Okay. And, yeah, we probably could have done some more, like with graphs or computers and stuff like that, and gotten maybe something closer. I don't know. But this is, this is good enough here. All right, so now let's go ahead and uh, plug all this in. So I get so I get k, which is six times b minus a. So remember, we're going from zero zero to one. So that's one minus zero cubed over twelve times n squared. And that has to be less than or equal to 0 0.0001. All right. So this is 6 over 12n squared, less than or equal to 0 0.0001. So this is 1 over 6. I'm sorry. 1 over 2n squared, less than or equal to 0 0.0001. One, okay, and I mean you don't have to simplify that, but I did. All right, so we're going to bring the n squared up here, the point zero zero one down here. So that means I have one over two times point zero 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 one, less than or equal to n squared. So I've got n is greater than or equal to the square root of one over two point. I'm sorry, 2 times point zero 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 one, And so I've got n is greater than or equal to, and we get 70.7. So that means we'll take n to be 71. Okay, so that would be our answer. All right, so I hope the video helped. Check out my other videos. Uh, give me a like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.